long after you and I are gone, the earth will still be there and it will hold all the atoms that make up your bodies and mine. Billions of years later, the sun will expand and it will become so big that it will swallow up the earth. Much, much later, it will run out of fuel and become one of those very many dead objects that you see up in the sky. But what of the universe? Will it be there forever or will it also end? And if it ends, what will it look like as it comes to its final destination? Now, something like 90 years ago, there were three possibilities. And these were all consistent with the idea of physics that had been put forward by Albert Einstein in his theory of general relativity. The first possibility is that the universe simply is static, which means that it's a sphere and nothing in it moves. That's clearly wrong because, as we know, the galaxies are moving apart. The second possibility is that the universe will expand outwards and it'll keep expanding, but at a slower and slower rate until it comes to a stop. At that point, it will reverse its expansion and move inwards, finally arriving at its initial point. And so you could call this the big crunch. There's a third possibility which is that the universe will not only keep expanding, but the speed at which it is expanding will keep increasing. So just like a car which is moving, but when you press on the accelerator, it increases its speed. All these possibilities existed, but now we know which of the three is actually true. In 2011, there was a major discovery made by three physicists for which they got the Nobel Prize. What they discovered was that the universe is actually increasing its speed of expansion. In other words, it is accelerating. The question is, how did they find out? In physics, it doesn't matter who says what. It's a question of where is the proof? There are two parts to this answer. The first is very easy. We know how to find out whether something is moving and how fast it is moving. In fact, if you're driving a car on the motorway, the police there can use what is called the Doppler shift radar to find out the speed of your car. And we use exactly the same principle to see how the distant galaxies are moving. So finding the speed of the galaxies is easy. But what about finding their distances? Here's one way by which I can tell how far away an object is from me. So imagine that there's a candle over here. And here is where the intensity of the light from the candle is measured. If the candle moves away from one feet to two feet from me, the intensity of light over here will go down by a factor of four. If the candle is moved to three feet, it'll go down by a factor of nine. In other words, by measuring the intensity of the light over here, I can tell how far away this candle is. Today, we have very sensitive telescopes. You can look at a candle that's even 5,000 miles away, provided that there is nothing intervening. So no air, no atmosphere, no kind of matter. In that case, we can see with, with these incredible telescopes something that's thousands of miles away. Just a candle, mind you. Now, the question is, do we have candles in the sky? And the answer is yes. There are candles that are stars, supernova, in every galaxy. Let me tell you a little bit about supernovae and why they are formed. Now, a star, when it starts running out of fuel, eventually has to die. And it can die in very many different ways. One way is that it suddenly blows up. And it, it's such a dramatic explosion that for a very small amount of time, 
that one star has greater intensity of light coming out from it than the billions of other stars in the galaxy. And something like once every 300 years, this happens in a galaxy. So we have lots and lots of supernovae all around in the universe. The three physicists who got their Nobel Prize made a very detailed study of the supernovae, and they found out that this is indeed the most reliable candle that you can have. So knowing how fast the stars, the galaxies are receding from us, and how far away they are, we can then quickly come to the conclusion that the universe is expanding at an ever greater speed. Now the question is, why is the universe expanding? What is making it expand at this ferocious rate? Now, here I have to tell you what is it that makes up the universe, because that's going to be crucial to this question. The amount of matter that we can actually see, the stars, the gaseous clouds, the planets, and so forth, are only a very small fraction of the amount of matter in the universe. In fact, of the total amount is just a few percent. The rest of the matter is called dark matter. It's called dark because no light is emitted by dark matter. If you throw light on dark matter, it is not absorbed. So how do we know it's there? After all, we need solid proof. And the proof comes from the fact that if you have galaxies, you see that these galaxies are moving around other galaxies. Some kind of a mysterious gravitational force is making them move in a circular kind of motion. Let me give you an example. Suppose you had a stone. The stone was tied to a string, and you saw a stone moving around, but you couldn't see the string. What would you guess? You'd guess that there's some kind of force that's pulling that, that stone towards the center. In this case, that force is gravity, and it's being exerted by matter, which you cannot see, but which simply has to be there. We're still looking for dark matter, it's not that it's been found, but there are many experiments, and probably by the end of this century, we will know how much of it is there and what it is actually made up of. But now, visible matter and dark matter is not all that makes up the universe. There's also something called dark energy. Dark energy is not so easy to explain. But let me try and do it anyway. Imagine that you have some kind of a vessel and you suck the air out of it. Well, you'd get a vacuum in there. And you'd think that there's absolutely nothing in there because you've taken out all the atoms. But it turns out, and it's very mysterious, and it's all because of quantum mechanics, the vacuum is not empty. The vacuum has got particles that pop out of the vacuum and pop back into the vacuum. So it's particles that are being constantly created and destroyed. These particles contribute towards the dark energy in the universe. And so the more space there is, the greater the amount of dark energy. It's this dark energy that's pushing the universe outwards. But the question then is, what is going to be the ultimate fate of the universe? As it expands faster and faster outwards, what that means is that the stars in the universe are eventually going to use up all their fuel. They're going to become dark. They're going to die. And so I'm sorry for being so pessimistic, but the universe doesn't have a very good future. It's going to become very, very cold, it's going to become lifeless, and the universe will slowly die away. 